everybody! I'm Nick with the USS Hornet Sea, Air, and Space Museum, and today we are taking you starboard side of the Hornet to visit Area 51 of the Gun Tub. Anthony Wilson here, USS Hornet Sea, Air, and Space Museum. What we have here is a 3-inch 50 caliber anti-aircraft gun, and what that means is here's a projectile, and 3 inches is here, the actual projectile, and 50 caliber means the length of the barrel. So this gun was used primarily against enemy planes because it was back before uh, missiles and long range projectiles were a thing and everything needed to be a bit more close up. Now, it's different now, the configuration from when it was built in World War II, there'd be way more anti-aircraft guns on the ship. This was after the retrofit in the 1950s where they took a lot of those anti-aircraft guns off because they didn't need it at the time. The strategies and the technology changed. So this would be manned by um, two men, uh, traversal and elevation, left, right, up and down. And then one of the guys had the trigger to fire the projectile. And then you'd have guys supporting them loading shells, getting shells up from below decks because you didn't store them fully near this area because if it got hit, that would be bad. So they start them well below decks to protect them. And then the shells would just fall, the casings of the, of the projectiles would fall to the ground. And usually there'd be an area cut out on the ship where they can, they can be put away or they just land on the deck and then you wait because they're hot and then you pick them up and and dispose of them. Now in the museum aspect, this gun is actually a loan from the Naval History and Heritage Command, which is the Navy's museum system across the country. And it's number 2017-001, which means it's, we got this gun in 2017 and it's the first loan of that year. And the restoration team on the ship did a really amazing job taking it from looking really terrible, and we have pictures of this in the database, to looking how it is now, uh, almost like it could be in service. But everything on here is demilitarized, so it cannot be used. Hi, I'm Joe Angiulo, Exhibits Manager here on the USS Hornet Sea, Air, and Space Museum. And we're in the four starboard gun tub today, looking at some of the ship's dual purpose guns. Anthony already told you about the three inch 50 cal. We're on one of the ship's five inch gun, uh, gun tubs. Originally, there were more of these on the flight deck, but this is the one surviving example we have. Uh, a lot of things on this work, not everything. Uh, originally, this gun would have been crewed by, I, I wanna say eight or 10 sailors. Um, it has some original features like these fuse setters. Uh, you can see there was somebody sitting here. There was a crew member sitting here. The crew member sitting where I am was responsible for elevating the gun raising the barrel up and down, and pulling the trigger. And everyone else, including the, the gun officer, supported that sailor in that one job. So you can see that there's, redundant, there's backup system, backup mechanical systems to do things like elevate the gun, raise the barrel up and down, or, and traverse it, which is move it side to side. This position also looks through the viewfinders and pulls the trigger. The trigger's here where my right hand is, it's not functional, but you can see the, the brass fitting. Would have had an air hose, I believe, down here. All of these systems include mechanical backups. So there was a backup trigger down here under this foot pedal. So the idea was the functionality of this gun was mostly powered by electricity. So it could elevate and traverse and fire really quickly. But in the event of a loss of electrical power, there's mechanical redundancies for just about everything. And that's true throughout the entire ship. Steering, uh, pumping, every critical function. It might be super inefficient and slow, but there's always gonna be a mechanical backup. Here we are in the ammunition handling space adjacent to the starboard gun tubs, which we looked at earlier. This space is immediately inside the hull from the three inch and five inch dual purpose gun mounts. Uh, importantly, we are behind armor plate uh, in as much as the ship has armor, we are inside one of the more secure spaces. And that's because a minimal amount of ammunition was kept on the guns proper. Uh, 
terrible things happen during World War II and subsequently when magazines and uh, ammunition storage spaces detonate leading to daisy chain domino effect explosions. So this space inside the armor was where ammunition was brought up from the magazines, which are deep, deep down inside the ship. I'm not entirely sure where they are, to be honest, but they would get brought up here, assembled, staged, and passed out through these uh, pill-shaped windows with, uh, with hatches, hatch covers on them, and spring-loaded devices so they don't fall back inside. They'd be passed out during combat to the anti-aircraft gun crews outside. So this space is entirely devoted to ammunition handling. It's currently full of inert five-inch shells, uh, three-inch shells, looks like some dummy fuses. Here we have a World War II era 40 millimeter ammunition identification board uh, showing sailors all the different possible types of ammunition they would encounter. We do not currently have any 40 millimeter Bofors mounts on board, nor do we have any 20 millimeter Ehrlichan mounts, but during World War II, those would have been very, very common on this ship. I think something like 70 or 80 20 millimeter guns and uh, dozens and dozens of these 40 millimeter Bofors. Very common World War II anti-aircraft uh, and dual purpose guns. Um, here we have the am ammunition hoists. These are essentially bowling ball return type machines. They're, it's a chain driven elevator that goes straight down as far out of sight. You can't see where these, uh, where these terminate. Somewhere deep in the bowels of the ship, below the waterline certainly, what's supposed to, were thought of as the most secure, safest spaces on the ship. So that's where the bulk of the ammunition and gunpowder would be stored. And as when the guns are firing, these things are churning and clanking and bringing up ammunition from the bowels of the ship to be staged and passed out to the bunker. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Talking Ship. If you like this content, please like, comment, and subscribe, and visit the link in the description to see our other social media channels. Please visit us next week for more behind the scenes content like this.